Welcome to our program. We will explore the many ways that mindfulness can make a difference in your workplace. The benefits of practicing meditation and mindfulness are personal as well as social, leading to more harmony at home and at work, both for you, your family, and your colleagues. The meditation you will learn today is based on Zen, the simplest form of sitting practice and the least encumbered with concepts, intell intellectualization, and religious overtones. For the sake of simplicity, we divide the complex problems at work into categories, listed here as the four Ps. Number one, personal issues and interpersonal relations that you might have at work. Number two, preparations for the demands of your job. And number three, policies of the company and your position within it. And number four, potential for promotion and career change, for better or worse. On top of the personal problems we all face at home and in getting to and from work on the commute, many of us have conflicts with a boss or colleagues. We have worries about our job preparedness or a lack of confidence when we are promoted to a higher level of responsibility. We have concerns about job security. Uh, many of us are working part-time, are juggling more than one job, and many face a lack of benefits such as health insurance and pensions, and uh, worst case scenario, being in a dead-end job with no potential for advancement. So if you see yourself in this picture, you are not alone. Now, in this context, meditation is not a silver bullet but it can help you to confront all of these kinds of problems and more. But today's program is going to focus on the specific condition of being in a sedentary job, seated at a desk or workstation for most of the day. More and more people are finding themselves in this situation. But these moments at work, when we are sitting at the desk, uh, all of the stressors uh, that we mentioned above may be at play. You may be worrying about your future. You may be thinking about the past. You may be thinking about what's going on at home. All of these situations, problem situations, if you like, provide an immediate opportunity to integrate mindfulness into your daily routine. We invite you to send questions, uh, including specific problems you face in your particular work situation to programming at aibtv.com. The program today consists of four parts. First, a brief introductory set of instructions in seated meditation for you to try. And second, a definition of the problems and some of the common causes and conditions of stress in the workplace, and how a change in mindfulness on your part may help you to cope with them. Third, we will touch on the effects and benefits of meditation and its mindfulness that you may anticipate experiencing at work if you take up this way of practice. And finally, we will review specific work-related comments and questions sent in by other viewers about specific problems with livelihood and career. And I will make suggestions as to what to do about them in the context of mindfulness and meditation. So we want to invite you to uh, pull up a chair. Please sit uh, in meditation or on your couch, sit forward on your couch during the entire half hour of this show. And we also encourage you to practice daily during the weeks that follow uh, this show. 
If you adopt uh, and take a methodical approach to mindfulness and meditation at home, and if you take it to work with you over the next month, I can virtually guarantee that you will see a difference in your attitude and happiness, no matter what kind of work you do, and really, no matter the situation that you are facing. The time you invest in meditation mindfulness will be repaid tenfold in the form of less wasted time, less stress from second guessing, and generally less anxiety at work. So all you need is a chair in which you can sit up straight and watch the program with your feet on the floor. If you are experienced in meditating in the Indian style, cross-legged or kneeling, feel free to do it that way. We will go over the three basics of uh, meditation practice. Sitting in the upright posture. Number two, breathing, a special natural way of breathing and paying attention. My own experience in meditation began with Hatha Yoga, but my credentials come from Zen. I am what is known as a fully transmitted Soto Zen priest, but don't let the language worry you. Zen is not a religion in the Western sense, and this program is not skewed toward religion. Instead, we emphasize the practical effects of meditation and its benefits and in this program, particularly in the workplace environment. Although there are uh, benefits at home, there are benefits that come from being mindful on the expressway, obviously, and many other situations in life, um, in, even at play, in sports and athletics and so on. So I am personally convinced that Zen's meditation has helped me immensely, uh, saving my sanity over the years. But this program is not about me, it is about you. When you do meditation, you always have a place to go when times get tough. So that does not mean it's a silver bullet, that does not mean that meditation is magical, but it always helps to sit quietly, upright, breathe deeply, and especially in stressful situations. Um, this is, may seem to be difficult to do at work, but we would like to uh, talk about today how you might uh, introduce meditation and mindfulness into your uh, office life or in whatever situation you work in. So let's begin. But first let me explain why Zen meditation rather than one of the other styles again. It's because Zen can be practiced anywhere and at any time as it does not rely upon verbal guidance of a teacher for instance leading you through it, and it does not rely on complex thinking. In fact, we say that it is about non-thinking, not necessarily uh, suppressing or stopping thinking, which is necessary, but also uh, not trying to think our way to enlightenment, but just being in the middle where thinking comes and goes, uh, as necessary, of course, but it doesn't bother us, and it does not interrupt our calm. So Zen also carries no trappings uh, of relig a religious sort that would uh, conflict with your occupation, uh, with your worldview, or with your religious beliefs. Zen uh, meditation does not have uh, a set of uh, beliefs that you have to subscribe to. It's uh, done with the body, done with the mind, and anyone can do it. So today, we simply want to apply the calming and clarifying effects of this mindfulness and meditation practice to the part of daily life that often causes us the most conflict, the way we make a living. So while you're sitting and listening to this program, uh, remember the situation at work. And then when you go to work later on, remember to carry what we have to say today to work with you. And if you drive on the expressway, even when you're driving, remember the posture and the breath that we're going to talk about today. You'll find that uh, as it becomes second nature to you, that no matter the situation you're in, uh, no matter how complicated or how stressful, you will find yourself calm, uh, able to meet the needs of the moment. Now, ordinarily, 
No special sound, such as music, is needed in the meditation space. Ambient noise, such as that of a fan, or even the murmur of voices in the office, will not really disturb you. Now, if people are speaking loudly, and you can overhear, say, an argument in the next uh, office, uh, of course, uh, the mind reaches out and grabs hold of that. If your boss or a colleague walks in the door and they have something they need you to do right away, that would, to some degree, you have to respond. You would, it would disrupt your, your, your um, calmness or your attention for the moment. But by returning to this posture, uh, sitting up straight, uh, breathing deeply, you'll find that uh, the kind of calmness that follows from it, the mindfulness, um, uh, returns quickly. So we sit up straight, we breathe deeply, and this posture and this breath are the two key aspects of practice that you can easily bring to work with you. So sit comfortably, but without slouching. Uh, do not lean against the back of the chair. Slide forward and perch on the front edge. Uh, adjust the chair so that your hips are higher than your knees. You may want to put a cushion on the chair. Sit straight up, arching the small of your back. Pull back on the chin, stretching the back of the neck. The whole posture should feel like stretching rather than a belabored effort. This helps you to stay alert rather than becoming sleepy or groggy and will help clear the mind of clutter. When you are on the phone, or otherwise not using your hands for a moment, uh, speakerphone for instance, place them together on your lap. You're interlacing the fingers or with one on top of the other, palms turned upward and thumbs raised, touching at the tip, Zen style. This is uh, called a mudra or hand position, but uh, it concentrates the mind. In fact, uh, ancient Zen master said, put your mind right here in the palm of your hand. The hands go in front of the stomach, which is where the breath touches bottom. So in this uh, posture, the arms should hang freely from the shoulders, relaxed and loose. Um, you may want to try a wireless keyboard uh, to relieve tension on the arms and nerves, which you can place on your lap uh, while doing a lot of data entry. The whole posture has a sense of uplifting, raising the rib cage off the lungs and stretching upward like a marionette suspended on a string. Take a break once in a while uh, from the sitting posture at, at, at home or at work, of course, standing up or pacing, uh, or lean back once in a while uh, to relieve the effort that you're making in the uh, lower body. But return to the upright still posture as often as you can. In Zen, in meditation in general, stillness rules settling into stillness. Now the breathing. The upright posture allows you to breathe deeply, partly because the ribs are lifted off of the lungs. Why breathe this way? Deep breathing is very soothing to the nervous system and keeps you awake. Yawning, especially after lunch, shows the body's need for more oxygen. Uh, under stress, we forget to breathe, holding our breath, even. So pay close attention to your breath, which we don't ordinarily do, and especially when you are nervous, nervous under some, any kind of stress. It will help you calm down, uh, deal with the situation uh, in a more uh, careful and mindful way. Full, deep inhaling fills you with fresh energy oxygen, which we need to sustain our energy and attention, awareness, alertness throughout the day. Exhaling fully drives the impurities from your body. So in this way, we think of each full cycle of breath as cleansing. So you may wish to count the breath uh, to help focus your attention on it. Counting, of course, not out loud, especially at the office. But a uh, simple way of counting, we count one for the exhalation, two for the next exhalation, and so on. Or we count one for the inhalation, and two for the uh, exhalation. 
count over and over again that way. One, two. One, two. Or uh, count one. Inhale, exhale. That's one. Next, inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Counting on the exhalation. You'll find the exhalation slowing down slower and slower. And uh, we suggest only counting up to four, or maybe at most 10, uh, as counting beyond 10 becomes uh, overly complicated, distracting. And then start over at one again. So however you wish to count your breath, keep it simple. Eventually, you will find your own natural rhythm of breathing and can stop the counting. So sitting upright and breathing deeply and naturally, the mind calms down like the surface of a pond on a windless day. Uh, wind causes ripples, which distort the reflection of the moon above. Uh, in Zen, we describe thoughts as like a pebble tossed into the pond. It makes ripples, which uh, disrupt the image of the moon hanging in the sky above. But if we do not pursue the thoughts, uh, if we do, and it's like reaching into the pond trying to catch the stone, we stir up the water even more. So our uh, attitude, and this is something you can apply at work, is to stop grasping uh, at uh, whatever is occurring at the moment, sort of sit back, uh, take it all in, uh, let the breathing calm down, remember the breath, remember the upright posture, the surface of the pond becomes calm again and reflects the moon. The moon here stands for the reality or the situation so that you will not be confused about it. You will not be, your emotions will not distort whatever is happening at home or at work. This initial calm that you begin to feel from this meditation uh, and even carrying it to work may not last, of course. Uh, again, some disruption at the office or something at home or on the expressway will cause uh, you to, uh, for a moment, snap out of it. But it will return if you remember to return to the posture and return to the breathing. The stillness is always there under the surface. So if you're feeling a little uncomfortable and you've been sitting still for a while, just uh, change your posture, adjust your posture, get back to sitting as still as possible as soon as you can. Uh, this is not uh, Meditation is not an endurance contest, um, not to see how much uh, discomfort we can stand, but it should be comfortable. So if you experience discomfort uh, while you've been sitting for some time, bend and stretch side to side uh, in a rocking motion, pendulum, and forward and back. It's uh, like the arc of a pendulum swinging and gradually coming back to center. So adjust your posture to relieve any resistance that you're feeling. If it's in your legs, if it's in your back, wherever it is, but come back to stillness as soon as you can. Tension accumulates in the shoulders and neck, generally. Raise and drop your arms a few times, push the shoulders up, hold them a couple of seconds, then let them drop. Do a few shoulder rolls, backward and forward. Then get back to sitting still. So move when you need to move, but always come back to stillness. Mental discomfort also arises. Distractions in the work environment interrupt your concentration. Worrying about or planning what you have to do later today. Or you may remember something that happened just yesterday and need your attention. Or recall something you forgot to do and it is too late to do anything about it. Remembering is part of being mindful and meditation on the breath and posture, paying attention there, will help you remember the important things. If you're sitting in meditation at home, uh, for instance, keep a notepad next to you where you can jot things down as they come to mind so you don't have to dwell on them. When the mind slows down in meditation, Nagging thoughts of these, this kind naturally float to the surface like bubbles in the pond. 
In Zen, this is called monkey mind. Like a monkey jumping from limb to limb of a tree, our thinking mind is usually in a state of anxiety. In time, however, thinking slows down, even stops completely for some time. In this process, we develop patience with our own impatience. And in doing so, we find it much easier to be patient with others. This is one of the secrets and long-term benefits of meditation and of practicing mindfulness and attention to the breath. Even in high stress situations, such as driving on the expressway or making a presentation in the boardroom, this uh, simple meditation can help reduce tension and keep you on an even keel. Its stillness fosters confidence in any situation. In meditation, a couple of minutes may seem like a long time. Let your attention open up to the environment and your senses. Pay closer attention to seeing, hearing, and feeling. Instead of resisting, embrace everything that you might ordinarily consider a distraction or a nuisance, such as noise from your colleagues at work or neighbors at home. Of course, if there is something truly disturbing shouldn't be happening, do something about it. At work or at home, it is important that light, sound, and temperature levels be kept moderate. The air should be as fresh as possible. Artificial aromas, such as incense, are not necessary. So pay attention to your environment at work the next time you go in and make any reasonable adjustments that you can to make it more moderate. But in any case, you can take advantage of your secret weapon, meditation. Focus on being mindful of breath, mindful of posture, to cope with less than ideal conditions. So all of this is addressing mindfulness at work where we typically are under the most stress. Sometimes conditions at home are stressful as well. And these days, sandwich generation, taking care of parents, taking care of children at the same time. So this kind of approach uh, really applies anywhere in your life. The upright balanced posture you are learning here comes in handy uh, and especially in sedentary office situations. It is an efficient, low energy alternative to stress from for, poor posture. Uh, if you're sloping to one side, leaning back, uh, the pressures on your muscles and, and uh, skeleton are um, causing uh, some of your anxiety, causing some of your inability to be alert and to relax. In this upright posture, the weight of the body distributes more evenly around the spine, like sails hanging from the mast of a ship. It may look strenuous, and in the beginning it may be, uh, especially if you're sitting cross-legged, but it is eventually uh, profoundly relaxing in a deeper way. Standing and walking also relieve stress, of course, but the meditation posture, done right, can be reinvigorating. Upright posture is recommended when driving to and from work as well. Adjust the seat back to allow wearing the safety belt without having to lean back. Breathing with mindfulness can be effectively practiced at the desk or behind the steering wheel. This is not simply a matter of taking a deep breath or counting to 10 when a situation stresses you out. When distracted or feeling stress, we remember to return attention to the breath just as we remember to pay attention to the posture when sitting. Eventually, muscle memory begins to take over and these new posture and breath techniques become second nature. This makes for more level-headedness in stressful situations and can have long-term benefits affecting blood pressure and stress-related disorders. All such stressful situations and the way you cope with them through meditation and enhanced mindfulness affect not only yourself, but also those around you. Pressures we experience in the modern corporate environment are nothing new. Indeed, they are part of the human condition. Whether we find ourselves hunting and gathering in a primitive tribal society or in the boardroom, these stresses apply. 
Now, a couple of comments from uh, viewers and people who are working in stress-related situations. Uh, for this program, we solicited a few comments and we would like to read those. These come from members of the Atlanta Soto Zen Center established in 1977, where I am the founder and guiding teacher. Many of our community are engaged in high pressure situations at work and balance their active careers and family lives with meditation. Here are a couple of quotes from the front lines of the battle. From JS, a computer specialist who works for a television station, I was recently promoted, partly owing to my ability to get people to work together, which I attribute to my meditation practice. But now I have to manage others. How do I develop these new people skills? Again, my answer, listening to is the key. But of course, you may need some professional training as well. In meetings with individuals or groups, sit upright and breathe deeply. Ask your team about how they feel about the task at hand and give each a chance to open up about their concerns. Use the group process in collaborative pairings to brainstorm approaches and solutions and to get their buy-in. Your meditation will help your confidence to meet these challenges head on. And finally, from RE, a specialist in finding technology solutions for his freelance clients, he says, I have found a company that is hiring and I want to work for them. How do I handle the interview? My suggestion, interview the interviewer. Ask him or her what they like about the company, what made them decided to join and to stay. You are not looking for a job, but for a community of like-minded professionals. Sit upright, breathe deeply, and the motor muscle memory of meditation will affect your mindfulness in the interview, helping you to tune into what the interviewer is feeling and saying, and setting them at ease. Being seen as a good listener will give you a leg up over other job candidates. Well, that's our program for today. Please join us again. In the meantime, please bring meditation's mindfulness to your posture and breathing at work. It will positively affect your attitude. And remember to send your work and stress-related issues and any positive effects that you experience as well from mindfulness practiced at the office to us. Please address all correspondence to programming at AIBTV.com.